Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this series of lessons, we want to emphasize that you can build HTML5 and JavaScript applications without the need for any special software. However, that being said, there are some free tools from Microsoft that can provide some conveniences and shortcuts to make the experience of web development faster, more organized, and more accurate. So in this lesson, I'm going to download and install Visual Web Developer 2010 Express Edition, and then I'm going to recreate the previous example from Lesson 2 uh, in that new development environment to show you how a world-class software development tool can make your life easier in some key ways. Now, although I'm going to demonstrate this using the 2010 version because that's what's available today, the things I'm going to show you will work and will apply regardless of which version of Visual Web Developer Express Edition you use. So simply put, 10 years from now, if there's still a Visual Web Developer Express Edition available, uh, what I'm about to show you in this video will still apply. Okay? So first of all, we're going to download uh, the Bootstrapper, the installation program, which is called the uh, Web Platform Installer. and it will kick off the download and the installation process of all the components necessary then to install it on your computer. So this is going to take quite a bit of time. I'm going to chop out any uh, tasks that might take more than just a few seconds. So your experience will undoubtedly be a little bit longer than mine during this installation phase. Feel free if you've already had this installed to skip ahead, oh I don't know, five, ten minutes in the future. Just kind of look and see uh, where we're finished up and where we start writing code. Okay, so here we go. The easiest way to do this is to go to bing.com and to search for Visual Web Developer Express Edition uh, download. And you're going to find potentially multiple results. We want to make sure we're going to some place that has Microsoft.com in the URL. And you may have to click around a little bit to find the uh, button that says install now or install now. Uh, let's go ahead and click that. This obviously is a way for Microsoft to get into developers' hands a limited version of their full Visual Studio development environment. So for our purposes, we're just going to go ahead and make sure to read the text and we want to install Visual Web Developer 2010. Uh, we're not ready to buy the professional version of Visual Studio just yet, maybe someday. Okay. And so let's go ahead and click install now. It's going to ask, do you want to save the bootstrap, the vwd.exe to our hard drive? We're going to click save. And it's a small program, but it will then launch the web platform installer, which will then complete the installation process. Now, because Visual Web Developer Express Edition is used to create more than just simple HTML5 and JavaScript applications. We can actually create ASP.NET Web Form and ASP.NET Model View Controller or MVC style applications. Uh, it's actually quite a full application. It's going to ask us if we want to also install, let's get to that part here, uh, SQL Server Express Edition. I'm going to go ahead and say, go ahead and install it and make sure that you use. Windows integrated authentication for now and then click continue and at this point it's going to begin to download uh, all the components necessary to set up both Visual Web Developer and SQL Server Express Edition. Now at certain points during the installation process uh, the user account control notifications may pop up letting you know or asking you should we allow permissions to the web platform installer to install this particular tool or make this particular setting on a computer go ahead and accept all of those uh, as you'll see here in a moment sometimes those uh, questions can pop up behind the web platform installer so if something doesn't happen for a little bit and you're kind of curious am I missing something here you may have to move some windows around and um, you even look between windows to see hey is, is everything still going are there any messages that I need to click OK to so just be forewarned about that all right, sometimes when you see a flicker, that could indicate, like I noted earlier, that something needs to 
um, now something needs to be given some permissions. I'm going to go ahead and click allow and allow and then user account control click yes so just be aware of that that it can sit for a while uh, and if you're not quite aware of what's going on if you don't look through the other windows that might happen to be open you might miss uh, some of these dialogues so that happened to me once all right all right so admittedly it might take 15 20 minutes but at some point you'll get a confirmation message if it all went smoothly uh, from the web platform installer. So let's go ahead and finish up, exit out of the web platform installer. Let's just shut every single thing down. So to find our application, let's go to the start button, all programs, scroll down a tiny bit till we find the Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 Express folder. And then we want to click on Microsoft Visual Web Developer 2010 Express Edition. It's going to ask us to register here in a moment. I'm not going to register at this moment. That's probably a step you should take. All right, maybe it'll ask me the next time around. But at any rate, you can see that there's a, a very attractive start page. What we want to do is create a new project. So I'm going to click the new project icon on the start page. There's a number of different ways to do just about everything here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this option. And then what I wanna do is select uh, Visual C Sharp Web and then choose ASP.NET Empty Web Application. Now, we're not gonna create any ASP.NET. We're just going to use the Empty Web Application uh, because it doesn't add many files uh, to the uh, the template but at any rate I want to give this a name so we'll call this um, C9 JS04 and then click OK alright so Visual Web Developer 2010 Express Edition will have many different windows uh, the window that we're most interested in at the moment is this Solution Explorer. It's kind of a collection of all the files that belong to a specific project. And each solution can have multiple projects. We discussed this more in our C Sharp series and our Visual Basic series and other series as well. Uh, we don't need the property window at all. I could just select to auto hide by unpinning a particular window at which point it goes off to the right hand side I can always get back to it by hovering my mouse cursor over it but at this point all we really need is the solution area and a solution explorer and then this main area where, where we'll do the majority of our work so what I want to do is right click on the project name the C9JS04 and select add new item the new item dialog pops up and what we want to do is create a, an HTML page I'm going to call this HTML page simply default and click the add button. All right, by default, you can see that it adds a doc type that we're not familiar with. This is a, as you can see here, XHTML 1.0 transitional uh, doc type, but we want to use HTML5 instead. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't give that to us automatically so we're gonna to have to massage this a little bit in fact all I really need to do is just rip off this everything over here uh, we'll get rid of the namespace and at this point it should be a valid HTML5 document okay so now let's go ahead and try to recreate the project and I'm just gonna start typing and when I do notice that we get a little box that pops up below what I'm typing and this is called IntelliSense it does a couple of different things for us first of all for longer words as we'll see in a moment it will allow us to autocomplete so we can kind of filter through all the um, items that start with the letter H or the letter F for example and find exactly what it is we're looking for uh, with regards to HTML5 tags additionally it will show me any attributes for the given tag. So in this case, uh, I want to add an ID. And you can see it shows me all the other attributes that I could attach on or events that can be handled. And so let's call this title. 
it auto completes the tags. Notice when I use the closing tag, it automatically created the remainder of the closing tag for me. And so we'll just type in JavaScript example. Notice also we get syntax highlighting that some characters are in a blue color, some are in a dark red color, some are in a light red color, and that's there's a couple of reasons for that. It helps distinguish uh, what it is you're looking at right now. Instead of just looking at all black text, it kind of helps you delineate as you're visually scanning through the code what each element of our web page consists of. And then also these colors have uh, certain meanings like the tags versus the attributes and so on. Literal strings are in a bright blue color and so on. You can see that as I have the tag selected it will show me both the starting tag and the ending tag kind of highlighted in this uh, gray background. I can also roll up entire sections so if I wanted had a large body section and I wanted to kind of remove this or the head section I just want to get that out of my visible viewing so I can see more on the screen at one time I can use these little regions these little plus and minus icons next to the web page. Uh, let's go ahead and use the save button. Another nice feature is the fact that we can manage our documents right from the toolbar. We can see all of the files that belong to our project here in the Solution Explorer. So it gives us the ability to manage our project uh, and manage the code in our project a lot more easily than if we were just to use the file system, notepad, and Internet Explorer by themselves. All right, let's continue on here. And I'm going to create an input. And so notice when I type type equals, it shows me all the options that I can choose for a type, an input type. So when I find the one I want, all I need to do then is I don't have to type out the remaining two characters. I can just type on the next logical character after the word text. And whatever is highlighted, whoops, of course I held it a little bit too long. Whatever was highlighted, let's get back to that. will then be auto-completed for me. Pretty neat. All right. So, I can speed along my typing uh, quite a bit here by just using a combination of tab keys, of uh, open and closing double quotes, and uh, open and closing tags and uh, to the extent that it can the visual uh, web developer express edition will try to determine what i need to type next and help me out in that regard let's come back to that in just a moment all right let's add a script tag and if you can't remember what goes in the type that's made easy by auto completion again I'm getting auto for uh, indentation levels, so I can just hit the tab on my keyboard and I don't have to worry about using the space bar like a dozen times to line everything up just absolutely correctly. Another cool feature too, let me just do this real quick. It auto uh, reformatted my code. I attempted to do something that looked like this, but it said, well, most people in who write JavaScript follow this convention of leaving the open curly brace on the previous line. So it helps keep your code in line with what would other people typically do when they write uh, JavaScript code. Now we haven't talked about objects and properties. If you're coming from an object-oriented background, then you'll know that an object has uh, both properties and methods or functions, as well as events. And uh, in this case, IntelliSense is showing me all of the members of the document uh, object. So I can choose get element by ID. I'm using the up and down arrows on my keyboard to find the one I'm looking for. And I'm just gonna type in the opening parenthesis well sometimes if you wait too long things don't work for you and it will also show you what it expects as a uh, as an input argument 
to that given function. In this case, it's expecting an element. And we want to give it my text box as the element. Now notice if I were to leave off the uh, leave off the end of, of uh, the semicolon like I demonstrated a little bit earlier and I start typing the next line of code I will get some notification that things are not quite right. And here again, you see another notification, a green under a squiggly line that says there's an unterminated string constant because we have not ended our string with a second pair of double quotes, all right? So again, let's save everything. And now when it comes time to test our web page, all we need to do, well, let's do one last thing here. It's called substitute on our on click method. I think that's right. Okay, so now let's run our application by using the start debugging button. And when we do, it makes the launching of our application a little bit easier. Uh, let's not show that app. And again, here, let's type in, hi there, click me, and it works. All right, so uh, the beauty of using Visual Web Developer Express Edition is that uh, everything that's needed for the project is collected uh, into a series of folders on our hard drive automatically for us. We don't have to create any special project structure. All the files are available. If we had folders, they subfolders, they would show up here as well. If we ever needed to turn this into an ASP.NET Web Forms or ASP.NET uh, MVC application, we could easily do so. Uh, it gives us not only the ability to manage the files in our project, but an easy way to also launch those files for testing purposes using the Start Debugging button. Uh, it offers, while we're typing, syntax completion, IntelliSense, uh, and syntax highlighting, automatic formatting of the code, and so on. So there's a lot of benefit to using uh, a real web development tool as opposed to just using Notepad. Having said that, we're going to continue using Notepad because, again, the emphasis here is not on the tool. I don't want to demonstrate all the features of the tool and uh, have lost in the message the simplicity and the ease of, of writing applications purely with HTML5 and JavaScript. All right, so we've got enough of the foundation work laid. We can start talking about the individual uh, syntax elements of JavaScript, and we'll start doing that in the next video. We'll see you there. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.